Just got in the mail today uh, the Arbor Day Foundation trees. Now, the Arbor Day is something that um, is an organization that um, is into planting trees, arbor meaning trees. And what they do is look for donations at different parts of the year. And uh, as part of the benefit of donating to the Arbor Day Foundation, you get to select a, a set of 10 trees. Uh, they are just you know, little seedlings. They're definitely not going to be anything like the pictures show in any uh, any small time frame. We're talking probably you know seven years for uh, some of the, the flowering trees to start doing their thing, um, and you know definitely five years plus before uh, they start really doing um, very much from this size. So if you're thinking about doing that, thinking that you're going to make some bonsai out of them. It is a place to start with bonsai. Let me show you a little bit of what you get. These ones in the red bag are two crepe myrtles. And these look like they were seeds. Yep, these came from seeds. They have this long tap root. And these will eventually become really cool looking crepe myrtle trees. Now, crepe myrtles are known for their flowers, smooth, interesting looking bark, and also brilliant fall color. So crepe myrtle is an exciting um, tree to be getting. Now these were free, so uh, if they work, you know, huge bonus. Um, if for some reason they they don't really take to the weather or the treatment that um, that they're given, then you know it's not a huge thing. I still uh, had the donation going. Actually, my wife did this for me. Uh, the donation went to the Arbor Day Foundation, which is all about planting trees and uh, making the world a better place because trees make everything better. So what I'm going to be showing is uh, just some ideas I have on, on what to do with, with some of these plants. Uh, first thing I notice is that with a seedling like this, this taproot is a good six inches long or more. And there's not really many fibrous roots off of these guys. So I could get pretty creative with this sort of thing. Um, it's pretty flexible. I could put quite a bit of movement in it at this size. Um, this is very new seedlings. These probably came up last year. You know, I don't even know when this came up because they don't really have roots to show. Um, but in any case, let's see what I can do with them. So crepe myrtles. Um, when I see these in the the garden centers around here. It's usually uh, the orange store that has them, um, that one home improvement store. And they usually have uh, landscape sized trees that you could certainly cut down, take air layerings off of them. But I've never actually grown them. So let's see, I think I'm gonna go ahead and add some wire to this. Shorten the top root just a little bit. And then uh, I'll just put it in a, I think I'm gonna chuck it into the ground actually. Um, I have a little space where I can put some of these trees and I believe I could fit all 10 of these trees in that little space up there which is uh, kind of near where my ginkgo seeds were planted. Uh, if you've watched the video for the ginkgo seeds, uh, they, they haven't really come up very much just yet. Uh, it's about halfway through April, getting towards the end of April right now. Um, if they don't come up by the end of, by the end of May, uh, then chances are they're not going to be coming up. So. Uh, that may have been a failed experiment, and I'll have some other interest uh, right next to that. Well, in any case, I'm going to put on a little bit of wire. This is a really good opportunity to use some recycled wire. And I, I just have a, a piece of wire that I took off of some of the tie-ins uh, from one of the plans that I've been doing. Let me get you a little bit closer look so you can see what I'm doing. Right, so got my wire. It's about the same length as uh, this seedling here and I'm just gonna take in almost what's called cage wiring it. Now cage wiring what you do is you attempt to wrap it without really contacting too strongly. And this is kind of uh, quite difficult with this because I'm trying not to crush the, the plant too much. This has buds all along the, the length of it. I 
I'll go ahead and just leave this excess on it because uh, I don't know. Don't know if I'll need that. So anyways, there's that. Go ahead and wrap it down to the bottom. Now all I'm doing is just showing you what I'm doing for this particular exercise. This is not at all a tutorial of how you should do things. Um, this is some scrap wire that I had lying around and these are some inexpensive trees that uh, well will eventually be trees. So now um, basically I'm going to see if I could bend this to the point of where it has a lot of uh, movement without actually breaking. So I'm bending this way and that, twirling, changing direction back in. And I don't really have a, a set pattern I'm trying to follow right this second. Also here and there I'm going to be adding some twists to it. And you may have seen this exact same thing in, in other videos. Actually, I believe very recently quite a bit of this sort of thing was done. All right, so there that is. It's just a tumble of wire. No particular meaning in the way that it was styled. And there's the end of the tap root. Snip that back just a little bit. So I'll continue to do that with some of these other ones. This is another crepe myrtle. And then these are actually color coded. So I have, um, let's see what's another color that I got here. These ones have quite a bit more uh, rootage on them. And they've been packed in some sort of a gel, like a water retaining gel. All right, so these with the yellow paint are Washington Hawthorne. Uh, Cretaceous Phenopyrum. I don't know what that means. Uh, I am in Washington right now and the hawthorns that I see around are normally English hawthorns. I don't see a lot of legit Washington hawthorn around. So this will be this will be an interesting one to um, to have since it'll look different than most of the, the other trees. Now these came with a, a yellow paint just for for marking. Uh, I'll be leaving most of that paint on to these because uh, that will help me know which is which is which. Um, I don't intend to tag these. And these are a little bit thicker so I'm going to go ahead and uh, wire those also. I'm going to see if I can do this with the same thickness of wire for this thinner one right here. And you can go clockwise or counterclockwise uh, when you're wiring. It depends on typically uh, where the next branch is going to be. Um, these have no branches, so there really is no meaning of the wiring other than the direction that it goes is the way that you want the twist to go. So what I mean is if I'm starting to twist it and I twist untwist the wire, it also opens up a gap in the wire. If I twist it the same direction of the wire, it closes the gap in the wire. These are quite flexible, but I'm still um, going fairly gingerly with, with these things. And this will be quite unnatural, most likely, in a, uh, a tree form for this particular type of plant. I'm just going to have fun, though, because I think it's interesting to do this with these. Now, this one is the thickest by far, so far. Um, and even so, it has um, rather a thin, thin enough to wire, I believe. doing this mainly just to get it done for speed. I'm not really going with any particular method. You notice that I am as I'm going bracing 
the wire with my my free hand <clears throat> This one I'll be a little more careful with because it has a little more development in the trunk. Pretty strong bend there. So I'm going to go a little different with. I'm actually going to go underneath these roots just for the hay of it. So a very different look on that one. And again, this is for fun. So I'm, I'm cool with however these are going to turn out. So these, these thinnest ones that have just a tap root and no real side roots to, to hold on to, rather difficult to get the wire started. The good thing is, I don't have to worry about the the roots so much with these because they really don't have any any roots um, to speak of. Just that little tap root. This one I'm going with some pretty significant bends to see what I can do with it. Oh. That one snapped. I'm just going to leave that though. Uh, it's a young plant. If it's vigorous and wants to live, it certainly will. Okay, so we have two different plants that have three of each. This one is actually American Red Buds. Now these I'm going to let grow just as they are. Because red buds are, are very good as an uh, upright tree. So those are staying just like that. The other three I have is these three white ones, which are uh, white flowering dogwoods, uh, Cornus florida. Um, so these are very similar to uh, dogwoods that I have around here. And dogwoods are a lot of fun. Uh, they have <clears throat> really nice spring flowers, uh, really nice green summer color. On their leaves and then in the fall they have really typically a brilliant color for the um, the fall leaves anywhere from a just a really striking uh, oddly purple color to a red or orange uh, sometimes yellow sometimes all those colors mixed onto the same leaf dogwoods are really a lot of fun dogwoods are also grown mostly upright and so for these I'm gonna actually Put at least some bends into these from down low because uh, they look really neat if they have some some form to them. Click done. And again, these are just going in the ground. Today is a rainy day outside and so uh, a little bit dark here in the greenhouse but it's still a fun day for me to just come in here have a real, little relaxing time in the evening we'll get to making dinner here in a little bit also but this will kind of you know finish off my my day I'll get to think about things that I want to do for the next day have a little fun making shapes Nothing in particular. This is pretty inexpensive wire. This is just uh, your typical aluminum wire that is easily sourced from multiple different um, bonsai supply outlets. 
this stuff was actually straight from the, the Middle Kingdom, um, which is China. <clears throat> I had gotten this a while back last year uh, when I decided I needed to uh, spend less on wire. Aluminum wire is pretty inexpensive, but at the same time when I'm using a whole ton of it, uh, it gets a, quite a bit more expensive pretty quick as I'm going through it. Okay, the last color is purple. Purple is a uh, Sargent crab apple, Malus sargentii. And I have no idea if I'm saying the um, Latin names of these correctly. And to be honest, I may, no may never really know. Um, it's probably something I should learn a little bit better since I talk plants all the time. But you know what, since I am um, just doing it for fun, right this second, I'm focusing more on just the shapes. So. These are extremely flexible up near the top and flecked. They really just bounce around. So these uh, crab apples, crab apples tend to um, can have a little bit of uh, an issue with some of the health problems, diseases and things around here. So it'll be an interesting thing to see how these do in my area. I uh, will be monitoring these very carefully and spraying them as needed uh, just to keep any diseases in check. Because the last thing I want to do is introduce a disease susceptible plant to my collection and have that, uh, have that put other plants at risk. I know that's a, a hot topic right now, just uh, risk management, when to stay home, when to go out, when to do what. Like I said, this is this is quite flexible. But still, even things like this that are quite flexible still have a breaking point. I really don't want to find the breaking point, but if I do, so be it. I'm using a little bit thicker wire for these because I wanted to um, make sure that it holds the thicker trunks that they have. On nearly all of these, I'm putting a, a pretty strong bend right next to the uh, where I think the soil line is going to be. And that is definitely intentional because what I'm looking for with these is not a large plant. Uh, if I wanted a large plant out of these, I would uh, first put these into the ground before really doing too much to them. And I would allow them to grow tall and strong. And then after that point, that's when I would start to apply some some training techniques. But what I'm looking for with these is uh, relatively small plants that can go in some smaller pots that I have. Yeah, so that bends a lot, these plants do. And this is what it looks like after the um, stuff kind of dries up a little bit. All right, I'll go bury these in the ground. Um, a fun little practice. Just a little something uh, to do with these plants. Uh, something fun. Uh, I have plenty of trees in the ground and I don't really have, I think, time to make these into big landscape trees. So if you are getting uh, little saplings, seedlings, cuttings, um, and hoping to use them for bonsai, 
just plan to be patient because it, it is going to take quite a while for a little plant this size to get big enough to be a really thick, chunky bonsai. Um, nursery stock is, is great if you want to start with some chunkier stuff. Um, one of the things I, I just highly recommend is rescuing trees from uh, people's landscape and other rural or urban settings where people are removing a bunch of their, their yard uh, plants for whatever reason. Usually it's to put other plants. Uh, when people move into a house, they'll often do that quite a bit. They'll, they'll dig up a, a lot of stuff and you know plant it with, with things that they like. So <clears throat> just have fun with it. That's, that's all I'm saying. Uh, do what you like with bonsai. If you don't like shapes, don't make the shapes. Make them uh, tall, stately looking trees. Uh, if you want something that has some dynamism, you know, curl these things, uh, bend them, twist them, uh, cut them back hard and, and grow some new shorter, um, shorter, can't talk right now, uh, <laughs> shorter branches with them. So have fun with it. That's all I'm saying. I keep on saying it too. I don't know what to say. I actually forgot how to YouTube after being out for so long. Um, so as I learn how to do this again, um, I'll keep posting videos. Uh, I'm going to try to go a little simpler than I had for a while. Um, I used to try to do a lot of cool editing effects with sound and music and um, tying in the motions with the music. And you know what? That took a long time. Uh, some of my earliest videos took six to eight hours of editing just to do that tiny little 10 to 20 minute video. Um, and the feedback that I got is that people like long videos and they also just kind of wanted something that was normal everyday work that people are doing for bonsai. And this is certainly some of that. So you'll be seeing on YouTube quite a bit more of that. Every now and then I'll, I'll throw in a little bit more fancy styling. Uh, oh gosh, this is heavy from down here. Things like this. This is a pine that I've been working on. This is actually, uh, I'm going to update um, people on my, my website channel. Uh, the Be Inspired channel on bonsaiecho.com. Um, I originally did the repot of this and put that video on, on that website. And um, I just did some deadwood work on it. So I'm also going to have that on the website. And then beyond that, I'm going to show um, some further refinement on uh, branch placement and other directions that this uh, Scots pine is going in. That's what you'll see on the Be Inspired channel on bonsaiecho.com. Um, and on YouTube, you'll have a lot more of the, the more informal sort of stuff where um, you'll just see what my, my daily things that I'm doing. So we got fancy, not so fancy, just a, a variety of, of different things to keep you occupied during your, your time uh, when you're looking for some entertainment. Um, if you can go to work, please be safe. If you're staying home, also please be safe. And either way, find some time to be creative. Um, do something. Less complaining, more doing. Have a good time. And thank you for watching.